All right, folks. Good that. afternoon. It's 1.30, and I'd love to open our December 14th, 2020 COA board meeting. And I have to tell you, this meeting is being held virtually through Zoom and is also being recorded. And bear with me, I'm going to share some more information with you. The town of Littleton began conducting remote participation Zoom meetings pursuant to Governor Baker's emergency order suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law on March 19th, 2020. Since that time, unanticipated legal concerns relating to the open meeting law have been brought to our attention by the town clerk. Those concerns were supported by the Attorney General's office and confirmed by town council. One concern is the chat function allows a parallel text conversation to a board's public meeting. Chat is essentially running commentary that is occurring, but it is not moderated or followed by the chair. All participants and listeners may not be aware of comments being made because some meeting participants join by phone and do not see these conversations. Another concern is conversations between residents within the chat room which are not incorporated into the public record. In response to these concerns, the town has implemented the following changes, which in no way prohibit any member of the public from participating in discussion and sharing information during a public meeting and will ensure that all listeners and participants have equal access to the meeting. People that join Zoom are set so their microphones are muted. If you called in by phone, please use star six to mute or unmute your phone. So that the meeting can occur in an orderly fashion, we ask that people who join keep their microphones on mute so background noises do not interfere with the meeting. If you wish to participate in the meeting, please use the raise your hand function available on Zoom, or if you called in by phone, dial star nine, which will activate the raise your hand function. The meeting host will notify the chairperson of the raised hands and the chairperson will determine whether and when to allow public comment. When called upon, participants should unmute, then state their name and address. After speaking, we request the participant return their microphone back to mute. Thank you all. It's good to see everybody. And hello, um, Anthony. Hello. I was everybody. just looking to see if we had guests here. Hey, welcome. Business is to welcome our new town administrator. Oh, thank you, thank you. It's so great to see everybody. Yeah, well, it's good to see you. I know you've been here what now? Two weeks with us? Is it about? Yeah, Anthony? this this starts my uh, third week of my second tour. Yeah, um, <laughs> I'm sure you got everything under control by now, though. Everything's all set. We're, I'm we're sure. Good. good. <laughs> so, is it casual Mondays? <laughs> oh, my granddaughter. Nice to see you. <laughs> Considering nobody's in town hall, it's uh, it's a little bit laid back right now. But I, oh, I see. Joe has a tie on. Yeah, I did. He it's but he was wearing shorts underneath it. You just can't see his. Uh, oh, yeah, right. <laughs> oh, we all do this, something different. But welcome uh, back. Ben, thank you. Thank you. I wanted to stop by and say hello to everybody. Um, I do have to attend another meeting, but um, just again, wanted to say hi if anybody has any questions or anything. It's great to see everybody. Well, welcome, Anthony. Thank you, Anita. I look forward to you coming to our personnel board meeting. Yes. Yes. Although we have nothing scheduled right now, right? No. Yeah. Okay. So that's a good thing right now. It is. <laughs> so I think um, we're going to take things with the board's okay, in permission. We'll just let it flow. If anyone has any questions or anything for Anthony, why don't we, um, and Joe is with us too, and I know both of them have tight schedules, even with the quietness of the town hall right now, but at least the town hall is open today. So that's a good thing. That's so, right. but anyway, yeah. So why don't you um, board members, if you have questions or anything for Anthony, why don't we just, and Joe, um, go for it. Maureen, Maureen has her hand up. There we go. Um, Maureen. How are the numbers? The what COVID numbers? numbers. 
Oh, our COVID numbers, well, we're still red right now. So it's, you know, it's still, um, you know, we really need to be vigilant as far as, um, uh, you know, what choices that we make to keep ourselves safe. You know, we, we've gone so, you know, it's been such a long haul and we've gone, come so far that we really just need to keep it up for, you know, a, 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 through at least the spring, I think that we're going to be in a better situation. It's great that the vaccinations have, um, uh, will be arriving in, in Boston today. Uh, but by the time, you know, people like myself and Ashley and Joe see them that we're talking into the spring, um, you know, maybe, maybe the end of March. <clears throat> so please make good choices out there. Um, <clears throat> especially with holidays and, and gatherings. I know that, um, you know, I just had uh, stayed home this year for Thanksgiving just to keep, you know, my parents safe. Mm -hmm. um, so certainly we don't want to let our guard down at this point. So I have a question. Um, can you outline a little bit on what the process is going through on how you're deciding when to open buildings and how to keeping them open? I saw that Westford's decided to basically close their buildings for the foreseeable uh, future. And um, it'd be good to figure out how that process is working and how the decision is being communicated to all the other departments and whatnot. So the, the approach that I always took, even when I was in the uh, previous communities, I followed the governor's orders on that, Mark. So when he went and, and did shutdowns, then that's when I closed town hall and we went remote. So, um, so right now we, we were remote last week because we had a positive test from an employee here at town hall. Thankfully, everybody, um, uh, came back negative and those that haven't had their results back are working remotely. So, um, you know, I, I don't see at this point the need, especially with town hall, not really being open that how it, I'm used to seeing town hall open. That, you know, I'm just going to follow the governor's lead, but I, I, I wouldn't be surprised though if sometime after the first of the year that, that we may have to go into another shutdown based on, uh, based on the healthcare system just being overstressed as as far as the number of cases and so forth. So, whatever Governor Baker says is is what we're really following. Do you know how many cases there are in Littleton right now? I don't, Joe. Do you know the total? I, I just, had it in an email. I literally I just out. closed that. Um, uh, I just had downloaded the um, weekly dashboard numbers. Um, so for uh, Littleton. Um, You know, as as in Anthony mentioned, we're in the the red. Um, we go by a two week case counts uh, as far as identifying trends, and within Littleton, uh, that was uh, fifty two. Um, you know, representing higher from the previous uh, two week uh, case um, and average daily uh, ended up being. Uh, 38. So, you know, I think the important thing is that cases have for three weeks in a row been trending upwards. And, um, you know, we're still a small community. So um, uh, a big percentage can really not be that many uh, cases. But um, with everything that's happening all around us and with other communities, um, you know, that's where Anthony had put out that press release, just reminding people to be to be vigilant. Right, so that's a good way. Another mark uh, way that um, that we're gonna message out is I, I did a press release when we closed Town Hall. That went out, we posted it on um, Facebook and Twitter and our and our website. So uh, following along there is gonna keep you updated as far as what's going on around town. Thank that you. Was a very thorough um, posting that you did, Anthony. Actually, I read, I saw that. Oh, thank 
Any we other have questions? questions? Before, yeah, before I have to hit my next meeting. Yep. I'm really looking forward to seeing everybody in person again soon. So are we. Trust I'll, us. I'll speak I for everyone. A, everyone. If we ever get out of our houses. We're going <laughs> to. I have a quick one, Anthony. Um, it might be premature, but do we know anything what's going on with the um, the architect on the space needs assessments? That's what I'm going to be joining you guys for. Okay. So yeah. I, I saw it later yeah. on on the agenda. Okay. Well, we can move you up, Joe, though, if you'd like to, uh, you know. <laughs> no, I was sticking around for the whole meeting. Oh, yeah. nice. <laughs> nice. We enjoy having these dignitaries with us. We really do. So. And Anthony. That's right. Thanks, Mark. <laughs> well, I just said dignitaries. <laughs> the only one we're missing is Matthew. I don't, I'm not sure whether he's going to join us. He has just, Anthony, so you know, Matthew Nordhaus is our link with the select board, and he has been attending our meetings when he can. So. Yes, he told me. I had a meeting with him Friday night, and he did fill me in. To, uh, yep. about that, so that's great. Yeah, it is great. We're really appreciative of that. David, you got your hand up. You got to unmute yourself. Yeah, unmute yourself. Uh, is that better? Yep. <laughs> yeah, one last question before Anthony takes off. We don't see him again. Uh, can you just tell me, and this is nothing to do with COA, is, is there heat in the library upstairs and down? Do you know? <laughs> I would assume so. Uh, I haven't been told that there's an issue. Uh, can you check into that? Yeah. <laughs> okay. And I believe there's no. I believe there's no heat upstairs at all. In other okay. words, his wife is cold. <laughs> and, and, and and there was nobody. I don't know if anybody was called because the town building was closed and nobody would come. So can you just follow up on that? Yeah, but Please. but uh, just so you know, just because town town hall was remote last week, I was here every day. Okay. So, uh, you know, there's and there was some other staff that were here too, but. Yeah, I wish that I knew that there was an issue. But uh, Joe, I, I, can you I, check into that, Joe, for me. Yeah. And find out what's going on. Do you do you know? I mean, they they've had the doors open, and we've been at we've asked them to close them for for pickup. Yeah. So doors, I'll follow up with doors. um with them on that. Okay, thank you. Didn't mean didn't mean to get off uh, department, but thank you. That's okay. That's all right. Okay. I thought oh, you meant the new you. library. <laughs> no, the old library. Yeah. That one's cold right now. Still. Yeah, it still has holes. That's right. <laughs> still has holes. Looking better. Than it has plastic it up. <laughs> yeah. 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 The progress is um, quite amazing, I think, in that library. Every time I, I'm not down there very often myself now, but when I do go down, you can notice the difference. Yeah. yeah. It's amazing. So. Right. Well, I look okay. forward to seeing everybody again. Um, and I hope everybody has a wonderful holiday. And if you, at any point in time, would like to talk, you know where I am. Um, we can do a Zoom, one-on-one. -on -one. Happy to do that. All right? Thanks, Anthony. Thank you, Anthony. Thank you. You're welcome. You're welcome. Again, welcome back. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, Great thank to be back. You. All right. Yeah. Bye-bye. See you. All right. So, do we have any um, other announcements or any, we'll start following our agenda. We haven't covered that. Um, Marge, we have two attendees. We right do. Now. Yes, and we have someone raising our hand. Okay. Um, we can actually. Um, you I can think talk we about can... Nancy. Pardon me? Nancy can talk now. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. It's too late. I wanted to say I had trouble getting on. A lot of trouble. And um, I wanted to wish Anthony a happy stay here, and I'll just do that later. Oh, okay. but I'm here. Well, I'm glad you got on. That was, um, you're the second person that had trouble, but only two so far that I know of that had trouble. So. All right. Do we have any uh, board members? Do you have any announcements that you would like to make for um, our viewers? I just came from Tewksbury and the roads aren't slippery yet, but it's snowing. Yeah. <laughs> and I came rather quickly to get here. <laughs> oh, thank you, David. We appreciate it. We're yeah. glad you're here. So I can share with um, our viewers that we have um, unfortunately had one resignation from our board. And um, Patty Hunt uh, stepped down. 
uh, yet I am hopeful that she's going to continue to participate and work with us and that she's at our meeting today. So it's good to see you, Patty. Thank you. I think we all really, um, well, we, we will miss you, I know, most of all of us. So. Well, thank but, you for the opportunity to work with most of you for a number of years. It was just time for me to walk away. Zooming is not my forte. When you have one ear that works and it's all mechanical, it's very difficult. And it was just not in my best interest to stay. I came today because I wanted to just express my thanks for allowing me the opportunity to at least contribute a little bit these last few years. And then I had a phone call from Marge and, and David asking me if I would consider <laughs> trying to stay on the housing subcommittee because they were gonna be able to meet in person, even though you have to wear a mask. And of course, when you're deaf, that's a bit of a problem, but I did tell them I would, if it's approved, I would attempt to stay on that board and meet in person using a mask as best I can. If, I, um, if it doesn't work out, then I will walk away, but I will try and give it my all because I've worked on housing for so long. But I, I wanted to thank the board members who sent me a little note saying they were so sad that I left. Don't be sad. There's always somebody to take my place. So do oh. not be sad. No one can take no. your place, no. Eh, Patty. No. We, you, know, you know that. No. But we certainly had nothing, as I said to <clears throat> Patty, nothing ventured, nothing gained. So it's certainly um, worth exploring so that she can continue to be, uh, be supportive and be a good resource for seniors in this town. So, and thank you Absolutely. for your years of service on the board. But we're not letting you go that easy. So. <laughs> okay. Do we have any other announcements? I would just like to thank the audience. Uh, anyone who came to our grab and go for the greens we had 19 participants and really glad to see all the people that came out to get their grab and go Christmas greens. So thank you to all of you for coming. Okay. And it just occurred to me as you were speaking, Anita, that um, a month ago when we had our meeting in November, I remember wishing Nicole well, and maybe Ashley can update us on Nicole's new family. No? Are you there, Ashley? Can you hear me? No. Okay. I don't know if I feel comfortable sharing that information okay. on cable television. Okay. Well, we wish um, Nicole well. Anyone else? If not, do we have any public input at this point, Ashley? Anyone from the public that wishes to speak? I know Nancy's on and the friends are are on our agenda. The friends report will be coming up in a minute. Okay. We have Dottie and Nancy right now as okay. attendees. Thank you. All right, then moving on. Can we look at our minutes from the uh, November 9th meeting? Thanks to Maureen. I don't know what we do without you, Maureen, but thank you so much. <laughs> it's probably one of the worst jobs of any board is doing the minutes, so. <laughs> I have to agree. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, I'm grateful anyway. I think everybody is. Um, any questions or any corrections anyone has noted? If not, we can entertain a motion. Uh, make a motion to accept the minutes of uh, uh, whatever date that was, December. November 9th. November 9th. As written. I'll second that. So we have a motion made and seconded to um, approve the more the November 9th, 2020 minutes. 
I'll do a roll call vote. I made myself a list today so I could try to be organized with that. <laughs> we'll start with Mark. Yes. David. Yes. Um, Anita. Yes. Susan. Yes. Maureen. Yes. Yanley. Yes. And Marge is a yes, too. So we have a unanimous vote. The minutes are approved. And again, thank you, Maureen. You're welcome. Okay. So we go back to the agenda, and now we come to the friends report. And um, I did have a message before I turn it open it up to Barbara and to um, Dottie, who are members of the friends. Barbara did respond to my, um, when I sent the um, agenda out to her with the link, saying that uh, please report for her the following, that tomorrow, and I'm sure Nancy and Dottie can speak to this more than I can, is the Lunch to Go program at Il Forno's, and um, there are 75 people signed up. So, and otherwise, um, basically, it's, she wanted to wish, on the behalf of the friends, wish everyone a happy holiday. So I did what she asked me to do, but I'll turn it over to Nancy and Dottie to see if they have anything else to add. <coughs> no? I think they're muted. They are muted. Are they trying to? Uh, they have to unmute themselves. Dottie and Nancy. Okay, Dottie's unmuted. Hi, I don't have anything to add. It's just that it's from 11 to um, 1 o'clock tomorrow instead of till 2 o'clock. Okay, 11 to 1? 11 to 1. All right, good point. Thank you, Dottie. You're welcome. Anything? Yeah, now I could unmute, yes. Okay. No, we have nothing, nothing new, unfortunately, because of the virus. Yep. That's understandable, I think. Yep. Yep. Well, thank you. We're grateful for the, I'm sure everyone is grateful. Obviously, 75 people are very grateful for the lunch to go tomorrow. So. And we thank the friends. The friends thank the COA and Elder Human Services for their support, particularly at this time of year. Well, I'm sure you're very, you know, gracious and it would be silly not to support you, quite frankly. I am very gracious. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> and so is Dottie. <laughs> so. All right. So we will move right along then to um, old business. And I, you know, I owe the board an apology. I promised this for our last meeting. And then I said I would get it out the week after the meeting. And I never did. And I finally got it out. I just put together a draft you know, not including all the details of how we're going to go about accomplishing things um, and sent it out to you to look at the um, a written document that we can just say that we have voted on and we uh, these are our goals. And the overarching goals, we have three of them. And one is to promote, explore, improve housing for Littleton residents. And there are... Uh, four things listed under that. One was to reactivate the COA housing subcommittee. Uh, one, another was to identify what housing is currently available in Littleton. And another was to collaborate with other town groups, such as the, um, uh, the housing authority uh, trust, affordable housing trust, the Littleton Station Area Committee the Planning Board to avoid duplication of effort and to, to be able to share information and support a team effort to work with those groups. And then again, the last item of, for that group or for that goal was to ensure representation presence at meetings of relevant town groups, such as the Planning Board, the Littleton Station Area Committee, et cetera. So obviously the select board, which the whole COA board monitors and the second goal was to promote the development of a new senior center for EHS COA. And again, we have a subcommittee that's working toward that goal. And then the third, which is something that we were going to revisit in January or February of 2021 was to 
review the parameters to qualify for the property and tax write-off program. So I was just trying to put together something that was brief and concise. And I think that captures essentially what our goals are. It's hard to have a specific objective as far as attaining each one of those, because we know the situation with housing, it takes years, as well as the um, uh, obtaining of a senior center. So if you are in agreement with that, or, yes, David. Yeah. Um, okay. So you sent that out. Um, well, whenever it was you sent it, probably oh, this morning, I guess. Yeah, well, you're right. Okay, <laughs> that's so why I said, apologized. <laughs> right, so it's better better late than ever. You said, and that's that's fine. Um, but the only thing I have on the paper is is just the heading for number one. There's nothing else on Are the paper kidding? at all. Right. No, it says it says promote, uh, explore, see. improve. I can't believe that. Oh my gosh! Does anybody else have that too? Yeah, yeah. I do as well. I oh, just okay, have so. them the one. Yeah, the number so can one. You, on that can, one. Can you, you know, right, so I had I had great difficulty with. Go ahead, yeah. David. Okay, you you just read it to us, and that's fine. Okay, so we can talk about that. But when when we're done here, can you send it again so we all have it in full? I will. And okay, you know, I I had great problems with Word yesterday when I was doing that, and um, yeah, I don't. End, I'll send it again and make sure I send the right thing. Marge. Okay. Yes. That is also in the November minutes. There is that. It's just not quite in the same format. That's you're right. It is in the minutes from November. Essentially yep. the same. So. Okay. Well, we'll go back to that. Yeah. Take a look at your minutes um, on the second second page. Under at the very second page where the goals were discussed. Yep. I see it. So can we just, if the board is so inclined, can we, we never did vote on this and accept them as our goals, which technically we should be doing. So. I make a motion. We accept the goals for 2020, 2021 as, as are written, as will be revised and written again. Okay. And set out. Second. Mm -hmm. As read. As read. As read. Thank you. And who seconded that? Anita. Anita. Okay, just so you have it, Maureen. Thank you. Thank you. Is there any other further discussion? If not, we'll do our little roll call vote again. Mark. Yes. Thank you. David. Yes. Anita. Yes. Susan. Yes. Maureen. Yes. And Lee. Yes. And Marge is a yes. Thank you all. I feel much better about that whole situation now. So. Okay. Let's see, moving on. Um, the second item under old business was to revisit the housing subcommittee. And um, let me explain to the board what has happened since we met last month. And refresh your memory, because it's a little confusing. But last month, we discussed the number of members of that subcommittee. And at that time, Maureen said she was stepping aside. She's in, very involved in the housing anyway issue, being on the Affordable Housing Trust and representing us on that group. And I said I would get in touch with Wendy and talk to her about it because Wendy was a board member also. After that date... Patty was a board member too, and she resigned. So that brought the num number of people down to, it was Susan and David and Wendy. I have been unable to reach Wendy, and unfortunately I've tried, but I have not yet reached her to talk to her. But in the meantime, we, it was suggested that we consider having a member at large. So I called Diane Crory and talked to her about that to see if we the subcommittee could have members at large. And Diane said, most certainly, but it needed to be a vote of the entire COA board that a member at large would be um, on the Affordable 
Housing Subcommittee. So that is why I came coming back to you today with that, because Patty is willing to serve as a member at large. And I am asking you, know, the board, to uh, support the issue and vote to allow the housing subcommittee to have a member at large. So, and that is according to Diane Crory's directions. And there is not a problem doing that in any subcommittee at any time, but that would bring uh, the member at large does have voting privileges. And so that would bring our board back to, I do not know about the status of Wendy yet, but it would be David and Susan and Patty as the member at large. I so vote that's the I move that we elect a member at large to serve on the housing subcommittee. Can I Are name Patty or do we have to do it first and then put Patty on? I think we have to establish the subcommittee first. David has a yeah, thought. Uh, yeah, I, I took the minutes on the subcommittee last month. Um, and the way, the way Sue and I figured it is that the two of us were a quorum because there was only three members and one was, mem uh, one was absent because, because Patty had already uh, resigned. So um, the, the, the subcommittee um, uh, two. moved and voted to um, accept a, a, um, a member from the, from the, from a citizen member, okay, and and also moved to uh, ask Patty if she would do it. I know that, but we were illegal in doing that. The vote has to come from the whole COA board, not the subcommittee. No, what I'm saying is that the subcommittee itself is very much in favor of it. Oh. That's all I'm saying. Okay, yep, you're right. Correct me if I'm wrong, Sue. No, you're right. You're right. I agree with you. No, know, you're okay. right with with saying that, David. No, we we went with the understanding that we had to get it cleared with with the whole board. Just want the whole board to know that the subcommittee is very much in favor of Patty coming and helping us out. Thank you. Well said. Well said, David. Thank you. Can, can I, I ask a, a procedural question? The Marines. Go ahead, Mark. Um, my only, I'm all in favor of having a citizen at large and all in favor of uh, Patty doing it. I just didn't know if we had to post it to have the citizen at large and then go through a normal process or can we just put no, her on? No, Diane did not say it had to be posted. No. Okay. I talked to Diane about it because I was uncertain myself. And okay. I, yeah. No, she did not say that. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you, though. I, Susan. I would second Maureen's motion. Oh, Susan wanted to say something. No, I was just going to second Maureen's motion. <laughs> oh, we had all right. Well, I think, thank you, Anita. <laughs> <laughs> all right, we have a motion <clears throat> on the floor, and it has been seconded to um, elect a member or to have the committee, subcommittee, have a member at large position and that it be filled by Patty Hunt. I don't think you can do that. I think it has to be two separate votes. Okay. Right. Remember we first the vote is so we're talking about having a member at large position on the housing subcommittee. Correct? Okay. Yep. Yes. Okay. That was my motion. Thank you. Mark. Aye. David? Aye. Anita. Aye. Maureen. Aye. Ian Lee. Yes. And my large is a yes. You forgot me. I did. I skipped. Yes. I'm sorry, Susan. Sorry. Yes. I apologize. Thank you. <laughs> it's okay. Even though I have a list, I'm messing it up. <laughs> That's all right. <laughs> okay. All right. So Madam I'm Chair. Yes, Maureen. I move that. Mary Patty Hunt be the member at large on the housing subcommittee. I second. Thank you both. All right, we'll do a roll call vote on that and I promise I won't skip anyone. I'll slow down. Mark. Yes. David. Yes. 
Anita. Yes. Susan. Yes. <laughs> Maureen. Yes. And Lee. Yes. And Marge is a yes. So welcome, Patty. Thank you. Yes. Boy, I've never <laughs> gone through such a hassle. <laughs> <laughs> It really wasn't a hassle. It was just a procedural thing that I, you know, and live and learn. You know, I'm, I'm willing to give this my all because it will be in person. It hopefully will be easier for me. Well, with a smaller Thank group, you know, confidence. as long as um, with a, we have a small enough group, it works. Right, Joe? Again, with the coffee, I always feel like there's footnotes depending on how things go with the state and under current things yes but at some point there is a chance that things could go, go all remote but then you know hopefully um things would open back up again so right well, we see the light at the end of the tunnel i think we're beginning to see a light at the end of the tunnel now so i'm hopeful yes, also. as long as it's not another train that's true <laughs> <laughs> You can always that's bundle good, up and meet outside. That's a good comeback. I have never heard that one before. <laughs> Very good. Okay, well, thank you all for that. And um, we have under new business, basically, we have. I think we're going to have a short meeting this, today. So unless uh, that was the reason why we had a revisit of the housing subcommittee on the agenda. So we're going to move on to new business. And... Unfortunately, as you know, we have a vacancy from the vice chair's position. And if you read our rules and regulations, it says the election of officers to fill vacancies created by death, resignation, or other cause may take place at any regular meeting and shall be for the period of the unexpired term of the previous incumbent except that the office of the chairperson, if vacated, shall be filled by the vice chair for the unexpired portion. But, and we nominate our um, officers at a board meeting. So I am um, opening that up for discussion for you. The officers positions though are just for a year and they expire in June. As you all know, we re-elect officers every year. So the, it would be a term for, um, you know, from now until the end of June to serve as vice chair. Do we have any discussion about that or questions or anything? Oh, so, so what you want to do is, is you're filling the position between now and June, correct? Correct. Okay. It should be filled in case, um, I think we should have a vice chair in case, you know, un unfortunately, for some reason, I wasn't able to do something. We need to have somebody that can step up. And I will tell you now, I, my only requirement is that a vice chair contributes to the development of the agenda every month with Ashley. My procedure is to uh, have Ashley the chair and the vice chair collaborate on preparing the agenda every month. And then that's basically the one mandated thing, you know, that a vice chair, I just feel that if a vice chair doesn't know what's going on, they can't step up to the plate easily. So that's why that re I feel strongly that it has to be the three of us setting the agenda. Yes, David. Yes. I, I would like to ask Maureen if she'd be willing to stand for it. I'd love it. to, I would love to, David, but right now so, I cannot commit to um, going to the town hall to do the agenda because we're self-isolating. Uh, I don't think that's necessary that you come, is it? No, it's not. No. No? No, we've no. done things, we've done things remotely. I could do it if it was remote, but I cannot come to the town hall. Uh, okay, so, so. So oh, if, it, if, it, if, it's, if it's clear that this, the procedures can be done remotely, then I would ask Maureen again if she would stand for chairman. I haven't nominated yet. There might be some other people, but I'm just asking her 
I should have called her today earlier and just asked her. <laughs> okay. If someone else would like to do it, I would certainly step down. Do we have other other volunteers? Nope. Okay. Then we have to you have to take a vote, I think, David. Well, in that case, I'll make a nomination that we that we ask uh, Maureen Donnelly to be our vice chair. I second that. All right, we have a motion on the floor uh, and seconded by a uh, motion moved and seconded that Maureen um, steps up into the vice chair's position. Roll call. Mark. Aye. David. Aye. Anita. Aye. Susan. Aye. Maureen. Aye. <laughs> Ann Lee. <laughs> Ann Lee. She's saying aye, I can tell. <laughs> she didn't unmute herself. Though. Aye. <laughs> Thank you. Here we go. And Marge is an aye. So welcome, Maureen. Oh, thank you. Now what's going to happen in the secretary's position? Uh, I'm willing to keep it. Okay. Because just to go on record, after June, I'm not going to keep the vice chair. <laughs> I will do it till June, but someone is going to have to step in in June. There we go. You all hear it, heard it. So. Fair enough. <laughs> all right. Well, thank I have you. a lot on my plate. <laughs> Well, yes, you know, Maureen is pretty active. The um, Affordable Housing Trust is a pretty active group, and she I know she took the minutes of their last meeting. So, so uh, um, do we need to go to the selectmen to ask to fill the uh, position on the COA board in general, or do we not feel it's worth doing at right. well, the Diane, remainder of the term? Or? Diane, um, I spoke to Diane about that also, and she said, obviously, she wasn't even in town hall. And she had done nothing with it yet. So we, it, I looked into it and they don't usually post until later into the spring before they post, you know, the position. But if somebody by word of mouth heard about it and wanted to apply, they can always go on. And that's what Diane said. They can go on the website and fill out the application and it will be acknowledged. So and I have not gone gotten back to Diane this week since town hall opened. Today's the first day, so. But I would encourage people to help get the word out that we have a vacancy on the board. And there are applications and they can go on the town website and fill out an application and submit it. So that's where it, it was left when I talked to Diane last week. The week okay, before. Okay, thanks. So. Good Thank question, you. though. Thank you. Okay. Do we have other questions? All right. So now we have updates. So do you want to, Mark, update the group as to the um, your meeting a week ago today? Um, sure. The vision subcommittee? Uh, so those... Uh, the vision subcommittee met. We talked about doing a, a survey on what um, what a senior center, community center means to folks, how they would want to use it, and so such. We came up with I forget there were like a half dozen ish questions or so. Um, um, you can update it, Ashley, on what you said. With uh, you had some response from people in town hall or something on the questions. Um, we also are going to go to um, area senior centers and ask them about their facility, you know, how many people they serve, what they would do different, and things like that. Um, the original goal for the survey was to get results back sometime in mid-February um, uh, for those two surveys. So we'd have something we could present um, theoretically for a uh, spring town meeting. So um, Ashley has some updates, too, I think, from since that time. Sure, happy to jump in here, Mark. So I did share the initial survey with administration 
Joe and Anthony, and they both had some uh, recommendations for how we can uh, tweak the questions a little bit to gain the most meaningful results and then how to disseminate the uh, survey to reach as many residents in town as possible. And I think too, based on outcomes from the space needs um, committee and work that was being done, some of the questions may be tweaked as well. So realistically, I think our timeline is going to be pushed back just a bit, just to make sure that it's an, a comprehensive survey that, that yields the best results. You know, Joe, you want to chime in here as well? Yeah, and, and that way, I, at least I can give an up an update. Um, so one of the one of the things is that uh, we were discussing was that um, we're waiting for uh, LLB to get us a timeline as far as when they expect to present uh, initial findings from Indian Hill Music Center to the select board, depending on those recommendations um, and that report and. We're hoping that we can arrange something for our January 11th meeting, or at least the follow-up January 25th meeting or some sort of presentation. Um, that may then um, have uh, the benefit of, of really trying to also guide some of those questionnaires, um, those questions to the community, depending on what, what that evaluation of Indian uh, Hill uh, comes out with so that at least we can have it geared towards, you know, a potential uh, direction and to be a little bit more focused towards what that space needs is, is recommending. Um, the, uh, the, other, the other thing is that we totally, we encouraged um, Ashley and, and everyone to, you know, find out from other communities that we're looking for uh, centers as far as getting some of that background information to continue with that work, but maybe to uh, wait until we have a better idea as far as timeline for a presentation before then finalizing and publishing a community survey. Um, so that uh, that's at least um, uh, what we had discussed and I'm trying to nail down a timeline with them um, uh, because it has an impact on our budget meetings and our, our budget season as we're starting to prepare things. Uh, and basically said, you know, that I need to have things in uh, next couple uh, weeks so that we can start building this into um, our uh, FY22 budget. So are you, are you looking at it as if, if we get a good report coming in from them, how we might take the first step to budget um, a more a more direct analysis of that building and what it can be used for if that's the way it goes. Is that what you're looking at? So one of the things that um, uh, that needs to be done, or at least the next step, is um, we haven't assigned any design money. Um, uh, that's what I'm trying to get at. Exactly. And we can't, we can't, we don't want to assign design money to five different <laughs> projects. Um, you know, th this stage was to provide recommendations and analysis. There was three on campus proposals that they had. And this Indian Hill represented a fourth and we need to narrow down to get to um, some um, uh, form of um, direction for the town. So our hope is once we take a look at Indian Hill and then we take a closer look at those other three on-campus scenarios that then we can have that dialogue uh, to provide that direction. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, it could be, could end up being Indian Hill, but also how then does that fit into a program standpoint? Um, because it's, it's a large building. Um, it offers incredible uh, capacity for programs, but also we want to make sure that people understand, like, 
we could we could have the Taj Mahal, but that may not be what the community wants. It may not what the, be what the community needs, and it may not be what the community can afford. So we need to look at various things, including staffing, what programs um, are are possible, what the space can be utilized, and um, hopefully that's what will be coming out as as part of their their presentation mm -hmm. um, and report. That so, makes a lot of sense, I think. Yes, Mark. So do we have a feel um, for if the selectmen are planning on asking for money uh, for design funds or something else in this, at the May town meeting, at the fall 2021 town meeting, the spring 2022 town meeting? I, I'm just asking the timelines where we're expecting to go forward with any of these. So we I know when to be ready. Yeah, I mean, I think they're they're at least going to be looking for some sort of uh, design appropriation for for annual. Um, uh, but that's why I'm I'm getting uh, a little bit of pressure uh, to to push and exert pressure on LLB to get going because we gave the green light for them to look at Indian Hill uh, over three months ago. This is taking a little too long to get to this point. Have they done? Okay. Have they done evalu oh, I'm sorry. Have they done evaluations for us before? Have we done business with LLB? Yes. Okay. They they had uh, back and unfortunately, you know, it's it's back towards middle to the end of February. They presented to the select board uh, their analysis of the DCU building, which basically then um, uh, took that out of the running and you know recommending. Uh, three other options. And at that point, we were talking to Indian Hill about uh, potentially looking at their facility. So uh, mm -hmm. there had been a significant impact because of the pandemic. Um, and really, we hoped that we'd have an analysis already. Do we know if they've even been in the building yet? They have. Oh, they okay. have the plans. They've been in the building. I'm trying to find out okay, where's the report? Where's the initial? What, you know, um, are there any problems? Are, are you still working through? What's your timeline to prepare that report? So unfortunately, um, I haven't gotten a response yet and I'll be uh, pushing them for some sort of commitment for a timeline. Um, Joe, even with, oh, sorry, go ahead. Sorry, Mark. Joe, um, where are the three other sites Oh. They're all on campus. Right. Different configurations as far as selective demolition, um, like almost like, and I, I use my hands a lot. So I'm pointing to the library for, so you know my orientation. Shattuck, the new building or old the old library building? is that way, you know, whether you tear down the old library, build off of there, renovate existing space. There was um, tear down the building, build on, on campus uh, further uh, back sort of into the hill. There was three uh, other scenarios that they were then looking at on, on the Shadda campus site. Maureen, do you remember yeah. these? I have those, March. That's what he's talking about. Okay. The drawings on the back, right, Joe? Yep. Yeah. Okay. So, so my assumption is even if the town would buy Indian Hill, something has to happen on the existing campus because Indian Hill is not big enough for everything. So that must mean we're revisiting those plans one through three with Indian Hill at some um, point, well, potentially. If you're talking about Indian Hill to take every single use that was um, here at Town Hall, correct. Um, you know, town offices and uh, you know, school administration, there's those pieces that still need to be figured out. Becomes a question as far as what opportunities um, Indian Hill re represents for a senior center or um, some, whether or not that can be coupled with some additional use because there's a lot of space there. Um, uh, and there's a wonderful theater as well. So there's these possibilities that um, could occur, but that's where once we get that analysis from LLB about the structure, about how it fits in with the programming that, um, work that had already been done on what, say, for a senior center was needed, what for 
um, park and rack, if there was to be uh, space, whether here or coupled with that site, there's some various opportunities and alternatives that they're supposed to be looking at. I'm just trying to nail down exactly uh, where they are in their analysis so that we can start planning for having that community dialogue. Yeah, uh, well, I assume that something still has to happen to the main building and it's going to be expensive. So it'd be nice if there was one comprehensive plan going forward. So yep. um, in Indian, Indian Hills also three years out, I think, right? They're not planning on moving till 2023 at the earliest, I think at the moment. Correct, so. yep. Okay, um, so maybe you, uh, myself and Ashley should have a, a quick meeting sometime um, so we can figure out what the plan of attack for the vision committee should be so that we're aligned with what you guys need um, before our next vision meeting, so. That would be good. So, I'll, yeah. One of us will set something up. Yep. <laughs> great. Sounds like a great plan. Just because you, I didn't have, make you go to the meeting. That's why you think it's great. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> so, thank you, Joe. Key players in, a, in in that meeting. So, yeah. Thank you, Joe, for your information. Oh, yeah. no problem. Yes. And that's exactly what Joe, last month, Joe said they were, um, he was anticipating, you know, getting the information in December or January. And that's what he's still trying to get. But at least they've been in. I don't think they had been in um, when we had our last meeting. I they think they had just gotten in. Oh, yeah. So, so we're making progress. It's slow, but we're making progress. So that's a good thing. Okay. So, update from the Affordable Housing Trust. Um, do we have anything between Ashley and Maureen to update the board about what's going on? Well, there was one new um, ERAP applicant um, that they were waiting for paperwork from um, before that could process through. I don't know whether that has actually been finalized, Ashley. Amy would know better than I, but that was ERAP 6 that we were outstanding information. Right. Just received um, the tenant agreement today. Okay, so we're moving on. Okay, and um, other than that, there wasn't anything um, dramatic that um, happened at that meeting. Yeah, you had a small group at your last right. meeting. I have a question for you. Would it be possible, Maureen, for you to share the link to those meetings with the board members every month so that sure. we don't have to track it down all the time? Sure. I thought Ashley, I thought I had sent it to Ashley last month. Oh, I don't know. Okay. I, I will try yeah, and I'm send happy. it out. Sure. I'm happy to do it too. I think they're also public meetings, right? So they should, yep. the agenda should be available. Yeah. They were on, on the, the town, town website right. as well. Well, the problem, then somebody has to teach me. I can admit this. Somebody has to teach me how to use the PDF version of an agenda to get into a Zoom meeting. I can't because it's not a live link. And I don't know how to get into the meetings from that. It's a live, there's a live link to all the meetings under the list of agendas for the meetings on the town website. Hi, well, those then I all, did. Those are all live links because I've gone into all the meetings that way. I've tried. I tried to get into the selectmen, select board meetings, and I can't get in. It, there's one place where there are PDFs, and there's another on the agenda list. Oh, I'll have agendas. to. Agendas. Oh. That's where there are live links. And just right. so that everybody knows, it's usually the second Tuesday of every month. And, um, oh. and um, this month it's going to change because they have a finance, um, uh, some major finance meeting. So it's not gonna be on the second Tuesday of the month, it's gonna be on the third Tuesday of the month. So, so just look for where it says Zoom meeting um, on the upcoming meetings. That's the easiest because then that will get you directly. Direct wow. No, those, but those links are PDFs. 
If you go back to the screen you are sharing, Joe. And no, no, those links take you to the actual, th those take you to another website and then there's a link and on there. The right, so. Well, I've had trouble with those, but all right. Yeah, so if you, if you see, um, yeah, the Conservation Commission meeting here, Zoom meeting, then that brings you to the to the hyperlink for that. Oh wow! Okay, I didn't realize that. I think I think the the challenge is by default. Um, we're so used to seeing blue for links. Maybe uh, unless unless people go in and code that hyperlink blue, it just gets lost so that it just looks like it's part of the regular text. Um, but those are selectable. Okay, I'll try that. Well, thank you. So everybody learned something maybe because I'm not very skilled at this either, folks, <laughs> so <clears throat> obviously. Okay, thank you very much for that. Because I know I enjoy, um, Mark has a nice kitty. <laughs> yes. <laughs> just walked in front of the screen. <laughs> Uh, but I enjoy going um, and listening to the um, affordable housing trust meetings. And I've also enjoyed, I went, did their train, their program that was on um, last Wednesday. And I learned how so complicated affordable housing trusts are. That's what I learned. But there's a lot of information and they, it's quite an amazing um, job they have actually. So, Okay. Thank you. And I don't know, I don't think you have, do you have anything, Susan, from the um, Transportation Advisory Council? I think no, you, we only meet every right. two months. So we're meeting in January. I know. I After I, I did not remove that from the agenda and I realized it. So I'm sorry about that. I, I do have, um, I had, I watched the um, planning board meeting from last week. Okay. And one, just one thing in that meeting that could be of interest to our board, um, they are looking in January of having a discussion about um, definitions of housing for the town and perhaps developing a bylaw that has some definitions of types of housing. And they mentioned in that piece, um, for instance, assisted living type housing. So I think they're going to be looking at, I think it got started with, with Hager, with Hager with the co-housing, which is a whole different concept. And then with Littleton Station with perhaps apartments and then perhaps yeah. assisted living and all of that. So I just thought that was an, of interest to us perhaps. It could be. Yeah. Thank you very much for sharing that information. So I think if we, um, the affordable housing tr uh, tr uh, subcommittee maybe can, once you, we finally are organized, can be more organized in who's going to be yes. paying attention to what group right. in town. Yeah. 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 So that we can keep tabs on what's happening and be informed anyway. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. All right. Now I will ask this question. We're moving down to the last item on our under new business. Did anyone have, think and dream about being the person, being the um, connection with Minuteman Senior Services? <laughs> Not I. No. Nope. All right. We're going to have to find, it doesn't have to be a board member. I think it's nice. I think if we can find someone from the community, even that Ashley thinks would be you know appropriate, then that's possible too. But we do need to find somebody to kind of be a link. What does that mean? Meetings. Pardon me? What, what, what does it mean to be a link to their meetings? Well, it's a rep, the Littleton representative uh, in their group. And so there's a monthly meeting that needs to be attended in Bedford at their main office when, when COVID isn't in existence. I'm sure those meetings are Zoom, um, by Zoom now. But it is just being the representative from the town of Littleton. Um, and I do, I have not done the job, so I cannot speak very knowledgeably about the duties, but I do know from people that have done it, that it takes the morning, you know, I guess pretty much by the time you drive there and then you leave and you come home. And it's so, just their 
monthly meetings. So are we missing out on anything important now by not having someone there? I mean, what if we like, if no one really wanted to step up to do it, if we like, you know, I'll volunteer to do January and I'll volunteer someone else to do February or something like that. Are we, I don't know. Is, is that a possibility or something that would be crazy or stupid or? I don't know. I would defer to Ashley because it's really not, you know, it's just something that, and Ashley's still learning about, I'm sure Minuteman um, senior services too, but it's an important group because, you know, that's the group that supports um, our diner and everything that's in our Meals on Wheels and everything. So we really need to, I think, but I'll defer to Ashley because it's up to her really as the director to decide how important that is. I don't know everything that's involved with being a liaison. My preference would just be to have someone, once we have more information, have a standing presence instead of alternating because I think that just gets confusing in terms of what one person heard and then the next month someone else could take right. away. So I think just for good consistency, it would be great to have one person, we'll just have to get more perimeters in terms of what this person is responsible for. So maybe we can work on getting that information too. Ashley, do you know if, are they doing Zoom meetings now or are they in person? Yeah, I know for the director's monthly meetings, they're on a Zoom platform. I believe Amy attends meetings as well. Uh, and they're also held on the virtual platform. So my guess would be virtually. When Do we know when they are? No, I don't know that either. So I, if no one else will do it, I will volunteer to go to Zoom meetings if it fits depending on when they are, but I don't commit once they're in person that I can go. If you let me know when they are Zoom, if they if I don't have something else, a morning to it. Makes sense. Okay. Thank you, David. I'm Mark. Sorry. Sorry about that. No, that was David. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that was definitely David. <laughs> so, Ashley, can you, um, you know, help us by finding that out, that information out? Okay. Thank you. Thank you for stepping up. Okay. Uh, is there any other new business before we move on to the reports, monthly reports? Nope. All right. Moving on. You have a copy of the director's report. Ashley, do you want to highlight it and or do board members have questions for Ashley about her report? Sure. I'm happy to provide some highlights. I just wanted to first say, even though town hall was closed last week, we were all still working our regular hours, if not more. And we were able to connect with people and all of us on the team have the ability to work remotely. So if the town hall closes and in the future, please know that we're still operation and business as usual. So just promoting that amongst the community so people know that we are uh, accessible. And the phone lines are checked regularly and emails, of course, but please know we are still still working. All right, some highlights. So the senior tax work off program, just a reminder that enrollment is open until Friday, December 18th at 12 noon to turn in the application and uh, necessary paperwork. Thus far, we have 35 people returning and a handful of brand new participants in the program. So once we receive all our applications, uh, we will review and place folks with job assignments. And those job assignments will be received sometime in January. But please know everything is pandemic dependent, which we've communicated since the, the start of um, relaunching this program. As Anita mentioned, the grab and go programs are still very popular in nature. We had 19 folks uh, sign up for the grab craft and go the winter greens activity and our outreach department, Amy was also able to 
deliver some centerpieces as well to, to folks that may be um, a little isolated right now, especially during the holidays. This past Friday, we had a Dine and Dash sponsored by River Court uh, in Groton. And that was another successful event. We staged it right in front of the library. Uh, we were contacted by a National Honor Society student expressing interest in collaborating with the Council on Aging to launch a, a tech friend program. So she's working with her society to uh, have a group of people at the ready to provide technology assistance. And we've advertised um, this opportunity in our upcoming January broadcaster just to see what the interest would be on our end. And then we would match people uh, to a student to receive technology help. Uh, we were also contacted by the Littleton Electric Light and Water Department. They are donating $3,000 to our department for programming purposes and emergency assistance. So some of the funds will be used for creating winter survival kits, also advertised in the January newsletter. It will be a grab and go program. What's coming up? We have a presentation on Caption Call, a non-cost caption phone telephone service scheduled on the 16th. We have uh, Holiday Musical Bingo on the 17th. Bill Bales is back with his internet presentations. He had one last week and another one coming up on the 17th. We have scheduled virtual digital photography classes in January, on January 10th and 27th. Also, Anne-Marie Schronowski is launching a bi-monthly mystery bag program starting in March. So twice a month, Twice a month, you'll receive a mystery bag filled with puzzles, horror games, and more to help folks um, beat the winter blues. <laughs> <laughs> and just a shout out to the friends of the Little Hen Council on Aging for sponsoring their lunch grab and go events at El Forno's. They had one in November uh, with 75 folks that enjoyed the lunch and they have another one scheduled tomorrow. Uh, so shout out to them for organizing those. Also, we had teamed up with the library. So across departmental collaboration to sponsor an author talk, which was held earlier this month, December 4th. The author was Ashton Applewhite and she gave an an insightful presentation. It was really informal. So people had the chance to engage with the author and the librarians are also preparing a follow-up book uh, style discussion on Zoom on January 15th. Uh, we had scheduled it for this coming Friday, but due to lower interest, we decided to push it off a month and try to boost interest in that program. Um, so I think that's all I wanted to share right now, unless people had some questions or comments. Lots going on in spite of COVID, I think. Exactly. Yes. I mean, really um, amazing, I think. Ashley, I'm still waiting for that application that never came from that young lady. Okay, I'll follow up. Thank with you. With you on that, sure. No problem. I have a couple questions. Um, one, when the town hall is closed, are the phone lines just staffed by voicemail or does it go to, is it forwarded to someone? I mean, how do we, how is that working? Is it? So right now it's working. Uh, folks leave a voicemail and we can connect back with the individual. The phone lines are, or the voicemails are checked regularly throughout the day. Um, that may change in, in the near future. So it also um, gets handled differently depending on departments. Some, um, uh, and they were, and uh, 
department heads were provided with directions if they needed to forward uh, calls from their uh, phone lines to their cell phone um, or someone within their department. Uh, some departments um, also have uh, cell phones that then have the number, say, for the main department uh, forwarded to that cell phone for uh, administrative assistance in the office to uh, respond uh, and take that call rather than going to the to the um, uh, to voicemail. There are some that then um, uh, do just say that they're going to be checking voicemail every half hour. So there's not any uh, single way um, that we had provided guidance for departments to handle it um, because some departments are like one person, uh, you know, conservation. So she checks her voicemails. Um, uh, you call the town administrator's office, you're going to get Diane. Um, uh, because she has a cell phone. Others, uh, you may get their administrative assistant because it's being forwarded. So uh, we let the departments um, identify how they want to handle that. That's good okay. information, Joe. Thank you. <laughs> uh, my other question is, are we doing any special reach out for people that might be home alone for the holidays to, you know, organize anything, you know, like a caroling event or like, I mean, we could reach out to like the high school choir or something or some other to help people that might be, you know, lonely and home for the holidays and can't reach out to, you know, uh, family. All, this time. All, yeah, all great ideas, Mark. I know Amy has a list of residents that she's in frequent contact with. And I'm sure as the holidays approach increased contact, she's also dropped off some winter uh, cent uh, winter centerpieces that are the crafts folks had had created to bring some extra cheer. I don't know, Amy, if you wanted to share a little bit more about some of the other outreach that you've been providing to keep in constant contact with everyone in the community. Yeah, so I, I, I have a list of people that I keep in, in touch with throughout the weeks. Um, over the holidays, I have more information that I'll provide during during my full report. Um, but I have, I've been working really closely with the Rotary Club. So um, over Thanksgiving, they actually delivered um, Don Donalyn's pre-prepared Thanksgiving dinners on, on Thanksgiving morning um, to some of our isolated um, seniors and under 60 disabled folks. So, so it might be good to reach out to the National Honor Society because I'm sure they would do a reach out to folks to, you know, you know, call or send cards or things like that. Um, so if you want, I can talk to you offline about how to, um, the advisor there, I'm good friends with the advisor there and I'm, I know they're looking for more projects all the time to help in the community, so. Hey, send them our way. We never say no to volunteers and I love the intergenerational component as well. So happy to talk with you further on, on those ideas. And we've actually seen an increase uh, of interest from the National Honor Society. So maybe you had something to do with that, Mark, behind the nope. scenes. No? <laughs> no. <laughs> like I said, the potential of the Tech Friend program. And then another student was in touch to see if the knitting group had um, some scarves and, and gloves and hats available for a drive that they're doing for the Lowell Transitional yep. Center. So whatever we can do to buddy up with different organizations in town, I think that's uh, a great way to help us all get through the next few months. <laughs> the library also has a knitting group, so you might want to reach out to them for stuff as well. Um, yeah, so the student actually contacted me and I connected her with our knitting group and she said that she was planning to connect with the library and the recreation department. So I'm sure she had um, some outreach that she was conducting as well, but I can shoot her an email as well after the fact. So I know that I, I connected back with her last week on, on behalf of the knitting group in the COA. So. Yeah, I, I told her we couldn't get at anything that we had that we could give to her yet last week, but now town hall is open, we can do it. So, so that, huh? Mm -hmm. Hey, Mark. Me, 
Yes. Yeah. A uh, question for Mark. Isn't there, isn't there another group at school that's involved in doing, well, for lack of a better word, doing good deeds? I know that they used to sponsor that Walk for Cancer and things like that. Isn't there a There's group a humanitarian that, club. Right, There's a humanitarian right. club that does things like that. It, I don't know who the advisor is now. It might be the same as the National Honor Society advisor, but yeah, um, that, I can. It might be might be great to get involved with them. I, I will introduce Ashley to the National Honor Society advisor and mention that. So, um, okay, put them off on off together. Okay, thank you. Great. <laughs> All right. I move that we accept the director's report. All right, we have a motion to accept the director's report. Do I have a second? Second. Thank you, David. Oh, David. Uh, Mark, sorry. I didn't look. Aye. Yep. <laughs> and Mark voted aye. All right, David. Aye. Anita. Aye. Susan. Aye. Maureen. Aye. Manley. Aye. And Marge is an I. All right, Amy, you're on. <laughs> I sent, I forwarded your uh, report out. I'm not sure um, if everybody, you know, managed to look at it here. But anyway, Amy's going to catch us up to date on what she's been doing. Like she hasn't had enough to do, but she has to do this report monthly. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, anyway. apologies for getting that out a little later. Um, I was having some issues with it um, when I was trying to send it on Friday. So, um, so our vans um, continue to run on Wednesdays and Fridays. On Fridays, our van drivers are still doing the pantry deliveries if Loaves and Fishes is open. So um, we'll pick up on Fridays and drop it off, no contact at people's homes. Um, we did a holiday distribution as well in November. So this was separate from our traditional Friday deliveries. Um, so on November 24th, nine households received holiday dinner distributions from those loaves and fishes that our van drivers picked up and dropped off. Um, so with that, with the no pantry contact deliveries that we do on Fridays, there was 21 households that received deliveries this month, well, in November. Um, and we would like to thank, our department would like to Just thank the camera. Littleton Light and Water Department huh? and the Rotary Club. Uh, uh, each year, Littleton Light and Water <laughs> Department receives donations for families, talk for families in need a holiday gift basket. This year they received enough donations to offer three families um, a holiday gift basket. Um, those three families that, that received them were extremely grateful and um, it really made their, their holiday this year. Um, so we'd like to thank them. Um, we'd also like to thank the Rotary Club. They generously donated 14 pre-made Thanksgiving dinners from Donnellan's and delivered them on Thanksgiving morning to those who are more isolated this year. Um, Donnellan's also donated <coughs> pies to go with each meal for each of the residents receiving one of those meals. So again, all those those people were extremely grateful to receive a, a warm home cooked style meal um, on Thanksgiving. Um, <laughs> In addition Jim. to that, the, the Rotary Club is helping with delivering the bagged lunches through the school. So that's that's also a huge help. So thank you to the Rotary Club for all that they're doing to help and support us. Um, our support groups continue to run virtually. The information regarding the specific group schedules can be found in the broadcaster. Um, SMOC is still accepting applications for fuel assistance. So anybody that is new or any returning applicants should contact me in order to complete and submit the application. I received word two weeks ago that the Salvation Army's Good Neighbor Energy Fund is now receiving applications. Um, so people should contact me if they want to um, complete that application. This program is only, you're only eligible for this program if you do not fall within the financial guidelines for fuel assistance. If you fall within the fuel assistance guidelines, then you have to go to SMOC. You can't double dip and do both programs. Um, so I think that is mainly what I had. Wow. A lot going on. It really is. It's amazing. And I think that you both are so busy given the whole situation. So, And you get busier every month. I think you're getting busier. Yes. Which is a good thing. So, We have a lot to be proud of in Littleton, really. We do. Mm -hmm. 
I have two questions, and one probably yeah. actually goes back to Ashley's report. But you mentioned donations for those gift baskets. How are we? How are people? Where are those donations being made to? Where do people? How do people donate to such a program? Because I don't think it's well publicized. For the, are I, you talking I, about the holiday gift baskets from Littleton Light? Yeah. I, well, I just didn't know how we were not, like if there were places where people were making donations to these programs uh, to benefit the COA outside of giving money directly to the COA. I I don't see a you know please donate here for this type things coming out or opportunities being publicized somewhere to know yeah. where to help sure. out. Sure, sure, I can interject a little bit. I know in our December broadcast, our, our Q&A section specifically spoke to that because a lot of people do approach us during the holiday season to see how they can give back to the community. And there are different funds that people can specifically donate to, and those are listed there. Uh, typically, it's people are reaching out to us, and sometimes they have an idea of how they want the money to be spent, and then it's up to us to, to execute it. As far as the holiday baskets, I know they've done that in prior years and coordinated directly with the outreach department on that. Does that help you at yeah, all, Mark? Yeah. yeah. Can we put links on the, like the website or something on, you know, things that you're asking for, potentially where funds would be helpful for or donations would be helpful um, for these things um, just to make it easier to find um, and things like that. So I know that tread you can donate directly on the town website, Mark. Yep. So it would be just nice to have a, a place to go for these links so that you could figure out, figure out what programs you can donate to, you know, and I pick agree. the ones. So, yeah. Um, my other question, I think, after is more towards Ashley again. What are we, what are our plans for indoor programming going forward with the state of the town hall being in, I'm going to say, I know it's open now, but I'm going to still call it in flux. All right, because I don't know that it's going to be open next month if things keep going. So, are we planning on indoor programming still? Or are we going to put it off? So we're gonna we're later? gonna put a pause on indoor programming at this time. We had scheduled six programs in December. Three were for the winter green centerpiece class, and then we had three uh, qigong classes. And out of the six, we had. Uh, participant three participants expressed interest in uh, the indoor winter greens workshop and it was decided that those folks would be transitioned to the the grab and go program instead I think it's a lot of different factors the numbers of course are are going up and right when we had registration it was all over the news about the holidays and how it's affected case numbers in town and across the commonwealth and even larger than that and I'm seeing now from some surrounding communities that have started to to program indoors they're kind of scaling it back and, and putting a pause so I think right now we'll put a pause and, and revisit in 2021 um, with some programming ideas again it would be a slow steady welcome back of, of prior programs and it's not the same program that we had it doesn't go there. Back last year. So. I wonder if we could also do like Zoom movie nights. I mean, mm -hmm. you have the movie license and things. We, you could be able to partner, you know, yep. find the no, I think that's, that's, things. that's a great idea. I think it's continuing with the grab and go programs that have been very popular as well as the virtual programs and just thinking creatively and outside the box to engage. And once we're able to, you know, welcome back again to, I'll try again to welcome back programs. I think it's going to be more of a hybrid model and maybe having a zoom room in, in some capacity where the, the program is available for people to participate at home. But if they're unable to participate at home, then we have some spots available for folks to come in and to be part of that. So I think that that's probably going to be our next step, but it's not going to happen in January. Great. All right. Do we have any other discussion? We need to have a vote to accept um, Amy's report. So moved. 
Second. Thank you. Thank you. All right. We have a motion that has been made and seconded to approve the outreach workers uh, report. Mark? Yes. David? Yes. Anita? Yes. Susan? She's muted, but she's yes, saying muted. yes. Yes, okay, got it. Maureen? Yes. <laughs> Ann Lee? Yes. And Marge is a yes. Great. Thank you. Who seconded that motion? Everybody. Uh, Mark, Mark and I. <laughs> Mark and I. <laughs> All right. Do we have any other business that we need to um, attend to? Uh, Maureen has to make a motion. Maureen has to make a motion? She always does. I know. <laughs> <laughs> I move that we adjourn. <laughs> she I does it so she knows who made the motion, I think. <laughs> Who's seconding that motion? I second Susan. Susan. <laughs> Susan, all right, we have a, our last roll call vote here for today. So, Mark. Yes. David. Yes. Anita. Yes. Susan. Yes. Maureen. Yes. And Lee. Yes. And Marge is a yes. Well, happy holidays, everyone. Thank you. You. Too. I hope everyone mm. has a healthy, a healthy um, holiday, and we all exercise. Good judgment. Caution. Caution. Caution and good judgment. You're right. It's